I asked the FBI not to give him the death penalty. I'm always a little uncomfortable when I'm asked to be on a panel discussion with murder victim family members who are not in the same position that I am. Sometimes even we can violate them by calling them to an attitude of forgiveness and a stance against the death penalty before they're ready to move into that. After my daughter was murdered, I thought I was going to go crazy. My family was just torn apart. Lori was my only child. I will never hear anybody call me mom. I will never be a grandma. My life stopped. My dad wasn't there for me when I turned 21 last month. He's not going to be there for me when I graduate college. He's not going to be there when I get married. And I, don't, I wouldn't have been satisfied with life imprisonment. I'm sorry. I don't care if Texas had it or not. I would not be satisfied because he can still live. My heart aches you know, for these victim families who've been made to believe at a time when they were utterly vulnerable, inconsolate in their grief, and that uh, death penalty was held out for them as the way to get healing. Healing is a process, but too often we look for simple fixes. And this was said to me two or three days after Shar was shot, George, we'll find him, we'll fry him till his eyeballs pop out. My response to that was, yes, I wanted the pain to stop. One of the things that disturbed me when we came in here is we were put on different sides of the table. We're not on different sides. I feel the only thing I can do is to share my own journey and, and hold that out to them and hope that they can see some inner peace in me and some healedness in me that will evoke a desire in them to want the same and to affirm their pain, their right to their pain, and their loss, and to say that I've been there. Having a needle put in your arm and going into a nice, peaceful sleep, that is nothing compared to putting a gun to our family's heads. They die with someone there watching them. They let my dad die on the street. Then what they ought to do, get the electric chair, put it on the television, and show when the, they pull the switch, and all the electricity to go through their bodies so people, the punks out there, can see that. And that's the only thing that's going to keep, keep people from going and killing somebody else. They made a choice and they picked up the gun. They have no rights as a human, period. We're talking about planning these people's death minute by minute. They're, They're the by ones. Minute, minute by minute. But they plan it. We're not. not. The healing they, they, they has to come from within. It has to let go of that need for satisfaction. Because in truth, um, death is utterly irrevocable. And there's no way that that loved one can ever be restored to us. And for me, you could kill somebody for the rest of my life every single day. And that would never make up to me the loss of my little girl or restore her to my arms. So I don't even want to begin to buy into that lie. I have been working with murder victim families for over 20 years. And I see that those people who retain a vindictive mindset, however justified they feel, that they, in fact, give the offender another victim. I saw it happen in my own family. Hatred is simply not healthy. 